All righty, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Chase Corrington YouTube channel. If you already know me, then the introduction was not needed. But if you haven't met me before, I am Chase Corrington, and this is my channel where we seek to achieve and maintain happiness through enlightenment, through the discovery of the hidden wisdom of the ages and the hidden wisdom of the masters throughout the ages by trying to understand that wisdom and then apply it to our lives so that we may achieve a higher quality of life. And recently on this channel for the last few months since the start of January this year, we've been reading through Wisdom of the Ages by Dr. Wayne Dyer, 60 Days to Enlightenment. And we've been doing that on Wednesdays. I think we've hit every week, except for maybe one week, a couple of weeks ago. And we've also been reading Change Your Thoughts, Change Your Life, also by Dr. Wayne Dyer. And that is reading each of the verses of the Tao Te Ching and then expressing our own thoughts and opinions, as well as Wayne Dyer's, on each of those verses of the Tao Te Ching. And then trying to um, apply that wisdom, the wisdom of the Tao, into our own lives and see where it might take us. But ladies and gentlemen, so far on Wisdom of the Ages, we are on page 130 about halfway through the book, as you can see. And so today's wonderful chapter, titled by Dr. Wayne Dyer, comes to us in the name of enthusiasm. It's literally titled Enthusiasm. The poem today is called A Psalm of Life. And it was written by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. Isn't that a fun last name? Longfellow. He lived 1807 to 1882, and that's one of the periods that I am most fascinated with researching because it seems the late 1700s all the way to the early 1900s was the most interesting time period in history when there's a lot of confusions and a lot of things were created and founded. But Henry Wadsworth Longfellow was an American poet, a translator, a college professor. Henry, Henry Wadsworth Longfellow is considered both a popular and yet a serious poet. And so let's read here a psalm of life from Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. A psalm of life. Tell me not in mournful numbers, life is but an empty dream, for the soul is dead that slumbers, and things are not what they seem. Life is real, life is earnest, and the grave is not its goal. Dust thou art, to dust returnest, was not spoken of the soul. Not enjoyment and not sorrow is our destined in nor way, but to act that each tomorrow find us farther than today. Art is long and time is fleeting, and our hearts, though stout and brave, still like muffled drums are beating, funeral marches to the grave. In the world's broad field of battle, in the bivouac of life, be not like dumb, driven cattle, be a hero in the strife. Trust no future, however pleasant, let the dead past bury its dead. Act, act in the living present. Heart within and God oh, overhead, overhead. Lives of great men all remind us we can make our lives sublime and departing leave behind us footprints on the sands of time. Footprints that perhaps another Sailing o'er life's solemn main, a forlorn and shipwrecked brother, seeing shall take heart again. Let us then be up and doing with a heart for any fate, still achieving and still pursuing, learning to labor and to wait. Mm. Henry Wadsworth Longfellow, that was a powerful poem, ladies and gentlemen about really seizing life and going after the opportunity and not giving up, giving up the pursuit because so many, I and mean, this is just what I got from it, my own 
you know, expansion. My own understanding is so many give up. It's like uh, art is long and time is fleeting and our hearts, though stout and brave, still like muffled drums are beating. And we send the funeral march into its own grave because we're not coming yet, ladies and gentlemen. Whew. Let the past bury its dead. Act, act in the living present, heart within and God overhead. <laughs> powerful, ladies and gentlemen, powerful. Tell me not in mournful numbers, for the soul is dead that slumbers. We must be awake. We must be alive. Life is real and life is earnest. Dust thou art, to dust returnest. But the grave is not its goal, ladies and gentlemen. That's a powerful point there. But to act that each tomorrow find us farther than today. And that is a great, just a wonderful poem about not giving up, continuing to keep going and keep growing, keep learning and keep living for life itself. Let's continue here into what Wayne Dyer has written and see what we can learn. Longfellow is one of the few poets included in this book who enjoyed enormous popularity during his lifetime. It's fascinating. He seemed pretty, you know, uh, get the crowd going kind of guy. I just kind of felt it when I was reading it. A Psalm of Life, this poem we just read from, first published in 1839 from a collection of poetry called Voices of the Night. Might be an interesting one to add to the bookshelf. Voices from the night. Voices of the night. Oh, I gotta adjust my seat here, ladies and gentlemen. All right. Hope you got yourself a nice beverage. I always like to get some green tea. Ah, it's cooling down just the right time. Sometimes you get your tea and it's too hot. You got to wait 10 minutes. <laughs> All right. Wayne Dyer continues. This, this uh, poem from the collection of Voices of the Night became enormous, enormously popular in America and in Europe, as does it later as did his later, even more famous works, The Wreck of the Hesperus, and his classic, The Song of Hawatha, Hiawatha, sorry, Hiawatha. This poem written by the man who holds the title as the most popular American poet of the 19th century is a tribute to one word. And that word is enthusiasm, ladies and gentlemen. The original Greek meaning of this word is a God within, in theos. I just added the in theos. I'm trying to break down the word to maybe some of the Greek, um, what's it called when you break it down, the sections of the word, in, like E-N-T-H, in thu, in theos, might mean the God within. Theos, I think, meaning God or gods. I'm just making this up, but I hope I'm close. Enthusiasm, I think, from what I'm just extrapolating here, would mean the activity or expressing the God within. If in theos is the God within, then expressing that would be enthusiasm. I don't know. Just making, just making some thoughts here, ladies and gentlemen. So the original Greek meaning of this word enthusiasm, a God within. Longfellow's Psalm of Life encourages you and me to take a thoughtful look at the brief span of time given to us, which is our life, and to adopt an enthusiastic and grateful attitude for all that we are and all that we experience. Remember our, um, remember our mantra, ladies and gentlemen, for gratitude and thankfulness. I am thankful for all that I am and all that I have and all that continues to flow into my life. It was almost repeated there. To be adopt this enthusiastic and grateful attitude for all that we are and all that we experience. In 1861, Longfellow was plunged into melancholy when 
His second wife died after accidentally setting fire to her dress. You gotta be kidding me, man. <sighs> That's heavy. His second wife accidentally died setting fire to her dress. What terrible luck. What terrible fate. Isn't that something else? After losing two wives to untimely death, Longfellow longed for spiritual relief. And much of the poetry of his last 20 years reflected his quest for making connection with the divine. A Psalm of Life stands as a memorial to the spirit of this great and popular poet. In this poem, Longfellow tells us that the soul is our true essence and things are not what they seem. Our bodies and our material surroundings are but a myth and a way of thinking that leads us to a dull and unfulfilled life. He reminds us that the grave is not our goal. When we speak of aging, we should refer only to the body for the soul, the source of our entheos, our God within, is not composed of dust, ladies and gentlemen. And I'll add, it's not a physical thing at all. And so he asks us here to forget about our sorrows and our pleasures and instead turn our attention to our own growth and vow to be farther tomorrow than we are today. And that's part of the reason I think I'm obsessed with this kind of you know, philosophy and spirituality and the research that it is that I do. It's like, I feel like I grow in a way that's um, indescribable. It makes me think of the Thoreau quotes, like if you advance confidently in the direction of your dreams and uh, endeavors, you'll be met with a success that's unexpected and common hours, common terms. And the growth that I feel that I get from the research and meditation and contemplation, even just of these topics that I talk about and go through and others that I research, there's a certain kind of growth that can't be measured in common terms, whether it's numbers or accolades or things, but I feel that I am growing personally, spiritually, mentally, psychologically, emotionally, and mystically. <laughs> but you know, ladies and gentlemen, this, it's this growth that we should never give up on. And it's what should be driving us to be greater and to want to continue to learn and vow to be farther tomorrow than we are today. And not just by means of a bank account or an accolade. Now, our body is a, it's a funeral on a march to the grave. But the God within, the Tao, the force, the divine universal animating intelligence, Within all of us will never know such a thing as a burial, ladies and gentlemen. You are not just your body. And that's most important to understand. The, the you that was 11 years old that would run out and jump over a fence like nothing, you can still connect to that young version of yourself in your mind, you know, and in your spiritual, psychological, emotional state, even though your physical may not have those abilities. It was a great president, I forget who it was, but he wrote, might've been Jefferson, or he wrote and said, fear not for I am fine. Although my house has grown, you know, uh, decrepit. Uh, he was talking about how like his body is a house, like an old wood house that's breaking down and you know, it's rotten in certain areas. The wood's messed up, starting to split and splinter. And But he goes, I, within my house, I am perfectly fine. I love that. That's a great metaphor to what we're talking about here. And he was telling his friends and colleagues, like, not to worry for me. Don't worry for me. Like, even though my house is jacked up, I'm perfectly fine. And I'll be getting a new house one day. Ah. <sighs> That's good tea, that Yogi brand uh, green tea kombucha. And it's always got a little message. It's always got a little message on the uh, thing here. So let's see what it says. 
The world needs your unique gifts. Don't lead them. Don't leave with them still inside you. Give that as an offering, ladies and gentlemen. Don't leave with your unique gifts still inside you. No matter how old you may be, you have something to offer while you're still here. As your mission is not accomplished just yet. But don't let that overwhelm you either. Now let me continue. I love the choice, Wayne Dyer says. I love his choice of words to get us to get out of the doldrums of a life in which we often act like drum, dumb, driven cattle doing whatever our herd mentally directs us to do. Rather, he says, be a hero, which I interpret to mean be enthusiastic until it positively thrills you. Demonstrate your enthusiasm for life and radiate it outward in everything you do. Until it infects those around you. This is heroism. You don't have to run into a burning building to save a child to be a hero. You just have to be in touch with the force, with the Tao, with the God within, ladies and gentlemen. That spiritual side of yourself that is connected to all things. Enthusiasm is not something granted to some and absent in others. Because if the divine encompasses all things, then there is nowhere that it is not. So it's not in somebody and it's not in somebody else. It is all encompassing. And so yeah, if it's universal, then that means it's everywhere. You know, there's no place that it is not. So enthusiasm is not something granted to some and absent in others. All of us have this Tao force, this God within. Some of us choose to be in touch with it and display it, while others may be very in tune with it and not display it at all. And then others mask it and allow it to remain dormant, deny it. We let our inner God be dust, even though. The poet reminds us, dust thou art, and to dust return us, was not spoken of the soul. It was talking about the body when it said that, whoever said that. Enthusiasm is a quality that nourishes success. When people ask me the secret of giving real talk, a great talk, <laughs> I tell them that it is being authentically enthusiastic. It's good to know for what it is I do here. Be this and you will be loved and forgiven for any flaws. As the great Greek dramaticist Aeschylus, A-E-S-C-H-Y-L-U-S, Aeschylus once proclaimed, when a man's willing and eager, God joins in. Enthusiasm spreads joy because there is nothing depressed or depressing about it. It has faith on its side since all fear subsides when enthusiasm is present. It is accepting because all doubt has been banished and there is now no uncertainty. Enthusiasm is a choice, ladies and gentlemen, that you can make right now or at any point in your life. This doesn't mean being a crazy individual. You can be enthusiastic about things without being real wild, if you know what I mean. I think sometimes that's what holds certain people from giving in to their own enthusiasm, their own, you know, excitement that comes from within because they think there has to be a lot of intense action or loud noises. But you can be quietly excited, very excited about something and have great enthusiasm while not being so bombastic, if you know what I mean. But I bet Wayne Dyer is about to go in the total opposite direction. So let's see what happens here. A contemporary of Longfellow's, one of our favorites here in researching the great wisdom of the ages and the great authors and poets that there has been throughout the ages, is Ralph Waldo Emerson, also recognized the value of enthusiasm. He wrote, every great and commanding movement in the annals of the world is a triumph of enthusiasm. Make your own life a great and commanding movement by practicing this psalm of life 
by practicing what this poem, Psalm of Life, offers to us. Let us be up and doing with a heart for any fate. Notice those people who have this heart for any fate and continue to achieve and pursue regardless of their circumstances. You see, this is very important to increasing the quality of our lives is understanding that the, the, these great people that do have a high quality of life, people that are successful and achieve well, and or maybe they're just happy and enjoying whatever it is that they have, I have to wonder what it is that these people do. How can we achieve these same results for ourselves? And that's kind of what we're studying throughout all of this, but that and many other things. But it's like, it's like, notice these people, they have a heart for any fate. And they continue to go after and pursue what it is that they want. Remember, advancing confidently in the direction of your own dreams and endeavoring to live the life that you imagine regardless of their circumstances. Reminds me of the old alley cat telling the kitten, you know, I never had a chance to go to cat philosophy school like you did. I, you know, I kind of grew up in the alleys and had to scrap for everything I got in my life. But he says, it's interesting, I have learned the same thing that you did, little kitten, when you went to cat philosophy school, is that happiness is the most important thing for a cat, and it is located in my tail. <laughs> but he says the difference is between you and me see the little kitten was chasing his tail trying to get an eternal lock on happiness and the old alley cat said the difference between you and me even though we know these same things is that i go about my business and do what it is that i know i want to do and need to do and it follows after me wherever i go mm. that's one of my favorites and i think that kind of comes out of that regardless of your circumstances you go after what it is that you want you know these kind of people they love to laugh they get excited over even the smallest of things they don't seem to know how to be bored give them a gift and they will hug you in appreciation and put it to use instantly give them a free ticket to a concert and they bubble with delirium over the unexpected opportunity Go shopping with them and their eyes are open and appreciating everything in sight and never complaining. Don't you just love being around them? These quote unquote enthusiastic people with a heart for any fate. Man, that's deep. I wish I could be one of those people. I mean, I've been trying. <laughs> it's tough, ladies and gentlemen. You can't just be one of these people automatically, but if we can learn these principles and these ideas and begin to attempt to apply them into our life, which is what Wayne Dyer is going to give here at the end of this chapter, which is why if you're getting value out of this, you should expand the description and go down to the link of this book and get it for yourself. It shows up in just a couple of days, you know, delivery is good nowadays, but if you're also getting value, consider subscribing and leave me a comment and let me know because it really makes me feel better when people do comment about these. Now let's continue. The free ticket, the unexpected opportunity. This enthusiasm, it is the God inside all of us. In quit anthropomorphizing, which means making God into a person, you know, or an entity. We're talking about the force here the universal intelligence, the Tao, okay? There were, you know, other beings that go by the guise of Elohim or whatever it is you want to call them. They're not this all-encompassing force that is being described here when the term the God inside of us is being used, the entheos. Now, sorry, I thought that was you know, that's something that I've learned over time, and I think it's important to make the distinction because it's hard to get to these higher spiritual understandings when you're still holding on to an anthropomorphized version of the Tao, the Force, the Great Spirit, Great Mystery, the Four Winds, you know, whatever. Every, every culture has a different name for this same thing. Now, Ooh, lost the spot. This, this Tao force, great, great spirit inside of all of us is 
that wants us to know what Longfellow means when he says, life is real, life is earnest. And I love that line. And truly, as he puts it, the soul is dead that slumbers. There's a great line from a Rush song that says, you won't get, uh, you won't get wise with the sleep still in your eyes, ladies and gentlemen. So if you're slumbering, if you're letting your soul slumber, you're going through life without really opening your eyes to the wonder and majesty that there is even just a question nature and the way that nature works, it's, it's time to awaken, it's time to arise, and it's time to become wise by removing the sleep from our eyes. Da -da -da -da. Hope you like some brush, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> All right. And truly, as he puts it, the soul is dead that slumbers. Let your soul come alive and experience life. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> experience life through your physical being. You can begin by reading this popular poem every day and permitting Longfellow's greatness to inspire your enthusiasm. Then try some of these practical suggestions. And Wayne Dyer here, this is why you should get this book for yourself to have it on your shelf for reference, for help. Because, you know, at the end of each of these chapters and at the end of each of the chapters of the Change Your Thoughts, Change Your Life book, Living the Wisdom of the Tao, Wayne Dyer gives us a practical, you know, rubber meets the road kind of way that we can put this into action into our lives. Because sometimes these thoughts are kind of up there in the clouds and it's hard to bring it back down to earth. And we're trying to create a greater quality of life, ladies and gentlemen. And so we need some practicality in order for us to attempt to put these practices into our life and increase that quality. So Dr. Wayne Dyer says, try some of these practical suggestions. Number one, anytime you are beginning an activity, like walking along the beach or attending a soccer game, pretend to yourself that it is both the first and the last time you are having this experience. Wow, that's a deep one. I keep looking at the flowers over here that we got a week or so ago. For some reason, they just look good right there right now. I decided I'd leave the window open and we'd have triple the brightness we usually have, or at least triple the white light, just for fun. But man, that's powerful when you're doing anything. Pretend to yourself that this is both the first and the last time that you are having this experience. This gives you a fresh eye and a sense of enthusiasm for whatever you are doing. I have eight children, Dr. Dyer says, and I couldn't tell you how many talent shows, concerts, auditions, recitals, soccer, basketball, and baseball tryouts and games and playoffs I have had to attend and have attended. I practice this suggestion each time that I attend. I'll pretend that this is the very first time I've ever done this. And the experience comes more alive. That's a powerful suggestion. He continues, or I'll pretend that this is the very last time I'll ever get to have this experience. And again, my enthusiasm soars. That last one almost made me sad. I'm like, no, this is the last time. I want to make more videos, ladies and gentlemen. Hopefully this isn't the first or the last time. I guess for this particular unique video, it may be the first and the last time. And that's probably how each life experience it is. You know, we only get one life. Whether we live many, many lifetimes, you know, whether we're on our hundredth lifetime, whether each life was an individual. And each moment within each one of those lives, whether you believe we live one life or 17,000, <laughs> or maybe just 17, I kind of like the 17,000 idea, but each one of them is unique. And each moment, each second in time is a garden to nurture and protect. Each moment in time is a memory of light. All right, sorry, I was getting poetic there. Suggestion number two, so that we can practically apply this wisdom into our life, ladies and gentlemen. 
change your mind about how you have defined yourself until now. Rather than, I've always been a non-demonstrative person, shift to, I'm going to let my enthusiasm for life show. It is always a choice to have your soul slumbering or enjoying its embodiment through you. Number three, lessen your inclination to be a non-participant in life. Standing on the sidelines while others partake of the action is all fine and good, but when you allow your enthusiasm for life to triumph, you will experience what Longfellow meant when he reminded you to be up and doing. Number four, another of Longfellow's great poems tells of Paul Revere's ride and begins with the famous lines, listen my children and you shall hear. Read it also in its entirety and feel the excitement of that epic moment and how Longfellow brought his enthusiasm to the telling of that story, even if it is only a story. Even while mourning the loss of his wife, poor Longfellow, this man was able to continue being up and doing with a heart for any fate. Oh. And I think that's where we ought to get, ladies and gentlemen, regardless of circumstances. You know, that's part of the thing that I learned when I was so afraid of the end of the world before I started my spiritual journey, my spiritual pursuit, this path of growth and development and personal enlightenment is that I was like, okay, you know, if there's always going to be an end of the world scare, we have to get to the point that regardless of what's going on externally, regardless of whatever's going on in the world outside of us, regardless of circumstances, we must be empowered. We must be at peace. We must be connected to the great divine intelligence, whatever it is. We must be immovable. You know, and then we have great power. And then when the circumstances do go bad, we can respond not only with ability, but we can respond with great ability. Response of great ability. <laughs> That's a good one. That's a boom to knowledge, ladies and gentlemen. I really hope you enjoyed that chapter. I know I did. The last couple or this week, they've been a bit more serious than normal, but I like that. We need a little serious enthusiasm in here, ladies and gentlemen. I really have no clue what I'm going to title this video. So we'll find out what it's titled by the time that you're watching it. But I just want to say thank you to so much who ever does watch these videos. And, you know, I really appreciate anybody who does take time out of their day to spend with me, with Wadsworth, with, you know, Henry David Thoreau, with Ralph Waldo Emerson, with Lao Tzu, with Walden with Elizabeth Barrett Browning, Williams Wordsworth, Samuel Taylor Coleridge, William Blake, William Butler Yates, John Donne, William Shakespeare, Leonardo da Vinci, Jalaluddin Rumi, Hafiz, I mean, a Zen proverb, <laughs> who knows who wrote the Zen proverb, but I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, Marcus, Tullius Cicero, Confucius, Lao Tzu. Man, this has been a fantastic journey. And if you did get value, I'll say it once again, please consider subscribing. Share this with somebody who might also get value and is like-minded because the more we get this out to other people, the more difference we'll begin to make in the world, ladies and gentlemen. And I really hope this is making a difference in your life. I know it's making a difference in mine. And we'll be back next week with some more Living the Wisdom of the Tao, Change Your Thoughts, Change Your Life, and then Wednesday Wisdom. It was Tuesday Tao, but, you know, I switched to Thursday and then back to Tuesday. So one of these days, but next week we will have the Tao and we will have the wisdom of the ages. Continue to seek to achieve and maintain happiness through enlightenment, ladies and gentlemen. Continue to 
seek out the hidden wisdom of the ages. And until next time, share some love in your life and do three kind acts and see how the energy of the universe returns back into your life. All right. Love you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much. We'll be back in the future. Nin -nin -nin.